is, <coughs> what is their manipulator risk? Okay. We're going to talk about a manipulator. So essentially, we discussed in the very beginning that we need three degrees of freedom to position the arm. Okay, we need three degrees to position the arm. So if you want to go to any particular location in space, you need at least three degrees, one along each degree. Okay at the very least. And we also have the orientation, three degrees of freedom to orient the arm. Okay, so this will give you theta, V, and such, right? Okay. The this whole thing will give you the end effector coordinates. These together will give you theta is known as the coordinates of the end effector. Right. So which is x, y, z. Then you have phi, theta, and psi. Let's call it phi, theta, and psi. Right? Not theta, phi, and psi. We'll call it phi, which is the standard notation. Theta. So orientation and position. So what happens is whenever you have a manipulator like this, for example, and you have a gripper here, this can only reach uh, specific points in space with a given orientation. For example, it will get here like this. Or if it's closer, then probably it will get to this point like this. Or for example here, it might get like that. So if you want to inspect a workpiece from all possible angles like this, right, then you need more flexibility because you want to get different orientations about that part. So in this case, we need a wrist so that you can have multiple orientations. The wrist will give you the ability to orient okay in space all right so ideally it gives you more dexterity in other words you have more increased dexterity okay. so you become more dexterous because now not only you can reach a point but you can also orient a point. So what we'll do here is, from here, we will add what is called a wrist. So let me call this as a wrist. Okay, let's say that you have a wrist here, and then once again you have your end of it. Once you have the wrist, what you can do is, from the wrist, you can, you can orient this thing as you like. For example, from here, you can rotate it like that, because the wrist will give you more degrees of freedom. Okay, so now at this point, and this is in three-dimensional space, so it could be like this, or within the board, and so on. So it, this not only positions the arm, it also orients the arm. So this is all possible orient orientations that you'll get. Okay, this is orientations in 3D space. Right? So now I'm not limited to just positioning the arm, but I'm able to move it around in space. Otherwise, I would have been fixed at this point. As opposed to this, if I did not have the wrist, then I would only be fixed like this. Right? That would be the only possible orientation. But if I add the wrist here, now I'm able to move this as I like. Usually what happens is to have a three degree of freedom at any point, because we want three orientation angles, I need three revolute joints. So this will be, the rest will be a three degree of freedom wrist. So this is a 3DOF wrist. Okay. 
Okay. This is a three degree of freedom rest, so that you can reach any given orientation. Now, if you have a three degree of freedom rest, how do you think the three axes of the rest should be aligned? How do you think if I have three joints, three degree of freedom means three joints, right? Either revolute or prismatic. So in this case, because I'm only rotating, all three are revolute joints, R, R, and R, right? They are all three revolute joints because you're only talking about rotations, you're not talking about displacement. Displacement is taken care of by the three previous links. The next three links will only orient the R. So how should the three joints be aligned? In this case, how would you expect them to be aligned? Hmm? Related to each other, what I mean is, should they be like this? Let's say this is my first joint, second joint, and the third joint. Or should they be in a different fashion? So if you align them like this, the axis of rotation for all of them is in the same line. It doesn't make sense to have three joints giving you a degree of freedom in the same direction because all of them will give you a rotation like this, right? So you don't need, one of them is enough, you don't need three in the same direction because you need three different axes, phi, theta, and psi are measured along three different axes. So if you have x, y, and z like this, Let's say this is y, x, and z, for example. I need one degree of freedom about each of them. So I'll, I'll take a degree of freedom. I'll have a, a revolute axis like this. One like this, and one like this. So I'm able to rotate about all three axes. Okay? That is how a wrist is constructed, because you want one revolution, one rotation about this, ability to rotate about this, ability to rotate about here, and ability to rotate about here. Only then it will make it fully dexterous, because then you can rotate about any given axis and generate any given orientation. So the next question here is, if I have a wrist, how do I make it not generate any displacement? So for example, what I mean is, if I space them out like this, so one thing is agreed that we cannot, we'll have three mutually perpendicular revolute joints. So these are three okay. Three mutually perpendicular revolute joints. Because if they happen to be parallel, then you are actually, one of them is redundant. For example, I only need one. These two are redundant. I don't need these two because they are actually providing motion along the same axis. So one of them is enough. In this case, we want to have them mutually perpendicular so that you can generate along different axes, motion along different axes. Now, let's say that I have, let's say this is the first axis. Then I have the second one and then you'll have a third one. This is how A rest will be. So this is the first one, the second one is this, and then you have the third one, okay? So one, two, this is like out of the board, this is in line with the board, and this is vertical. So all three of them are mutually perpendicular. Now in this case, if I have a distance here, this distance here, as A1, or let's say I call it A3, and A4, here, okay. What happens is, the first three links of the manipulator are already generating displacement. You don't want to complicate it even further by adding a link length here, okay? So adding a link length here will generate even more displacement, because when this rotates, the whole, the rest of the arm will rotate like this. Or when this rotates, this will go upwards or downwards. So we don't need more displacement because this is the fourth joint, this is the fifth joint, and this is the sixth 
joint, right? Because you already have three joints before this. So you didn't, don't need more displacement. Displacement has been taken care of. So what we do is, we align the three joints along one center. So all the three joints will be cocentric. So for example, they'll be like this. Okay, they'll be at one point. This is called the wrist center. WC, this is called the wrist center. Why do we do this? Because we are only concerned with orientation. We don't want any change of displacement. We are, we are not thinking of moving the arm. We are only thinking of just orienting the arm. This will only create orientation. So there is no link length. This will be zero. This will be zero. Because these two these two will actually, all three of them will overlap at this point called WC. Okay, so this will move up here and this will move here. So you will have three axes of rotation. This is one, this is two, and this is two. Okay, so you can rotate about this. This type of a rest is known as a spherical rest. about what the envelope it traces, it traces a sphere because you have motion along all three axes and then when you look at it, it actually traces a sphere. So this sphere will generate every given orientation. So if you take a point space and you think of a cloud, a spherical cloud around it, then this will actually trace a round sphere around it, which is why it's called a spherical wrist. So the workspace of this will be a sphere, a three-dimensional sphere which will trace every point possible. You can reach every point possible, and that's why it's called a spherical mesh. So most industrial manipulators have a spherical mesh. Okay? Most industrial manipulators will have three degrees of freedom. So industrial manipulators will have Six degrees of freedom, six DUF. Three for positioning. And three for orientation. And this, these three form a spherical cluster. <coughs> and when we go to inverse kinematics, you will see how easy it is to solve when there is a spherical rest. If there is no spherical rest, then it becomes a little more complex, not always, but in most cases it does. To solve when you have displacements. Okay, so let's think about doing a DH table for a spherical rest. So what does a DH table for a spherical rest look like? Let's take the three axes here. So we'll start with this one. So let's say that this is my DH for a spherical wrist. So let's say that, yeah, this is how it is. Let's say this is the wrist. This is the wrist center, WC, at this point. Okay. Now what we'll try to do is we'll set up the <coughs> axis. Now this is the third joint. So third joint, will, this will be D3 for the third joint. Okay. 
So this is theta 3, theta 3, sorry, theta 4. Z3 will be theta 4. So this is going to be theta 4. Professor, you have just mentioned that we don't need any displacement. So exactly. I cannot, we will measure, we won't measure the distance, but I'm drawing this so that you can see what it is. Okay. Actually, they are all overlapping. The only thing is I'm doing a line diagram so we can space out the axis. Okay? Otherwise, there is no room to do that. Also. Okay? Theta 5 is measured like this. I just want to see the, the positive direction of the angle so we can set up the axis. I'm sorry, it's in the other direction. Drawn this later, but anyways. Okay, so if this is theta 4, this is the angle of rotation, so I'll wrap my fingers around it. So this, my thumb will indicate the axis. This is Z3. Okay, why am I not writing Z4 and Z3 for theta 4? Because this is rest. No, because you start from 0. zero. Okay, the first one is Z0, right? The first joint is Z0, and then there's always n plus 1 frames. We end with, we start from 0 and we end with nth frame. So there are n plus 1 frames. So in this case, if I wrap my fingers along this positive direction, my Z5, I'm sorry, my Z4 will be like this. Okay, this will be Z4 because that's the positive direction of rotation. Here, it's like this, so this is going to be Z6, sorry, Z5, for theta 6. And finally, I'll write Z6 like that. Okay, now try to pick the x-axis for this. <coughs> Try to pick the x-axis for this. So you start with x4, right? We need x4. No, we need x5, x6. x3. You don't need x3. Okay? x3, you need to define the previous link. Okay? We are only talking about the list. Okay? So let's start with x4, x5, and x6. x4 should be perpendicular to z4 to and z3. So in the direction of z5, should be x4. Yeah, you can take in the direction of z5. You have two, two ways to do it, right? Either like this or like this. Like this, yeah. And it should be at the intersection. So these three are revolute, so we really don't care about much about x in terms of the angles because <coughs> you have a alpha this is four, five, and six. Okay? These are joints four, five, and six. Here, this is theta four, which is revolute. Theta 5 is revolute, and theta 6 is revolute. Okay? All three are variable joints, so 4, 5, and 6 are revolute. <coughs> the only thing that we need to figure out here, as you know, for most cases, A is 0 because the lengths are 0. Okay? The only thing that is of interest to us is alpha, most importantly. <coughs> and D in only in one case, because the lengths are essentially zero. The lengths are taken care of by the first three joints. Okay. <clears throat> so now, if you look at the space here, Z3 is like this. Let's take the wrist center. This is WC. Okay, this wrist is the wrist center, WC. That is Z3. Okay, Z4 is outside the board, like this. So now I have a choice to pick x either like this or like this, right? So I can, which is perpendicular to both z3 and z4. So let me say that I take x like this. Right? I 
pick X4 like this. Let's go here. Now, if you go to the next one at this point, you have WC. Z4 is like this. This is Z4. I can write WC here. Okay. Z5 is like so. Okay. Now, again, I have two choices. So I picked this one, right? Clearly, I picked this one. Here, I'll have two choices, which is I can take X4 like this, X5 like this, or X5 like this. Okay. Let's say I pick this one. All right. So I'll have <coughs> X5. have x6. x6 you will obviously take it here. Okay. So if you look at the wrist center, the wrist center will be like this. This is wc. Okay. Now z3 goes up. is outside the board like this. Okay. Z5 is along this line here. This is WC. Here do you have Z6. Okay. X, if you look at X4 is here, X5 is here. So this is X4. X5 is here like this. And this will be x Okay, this is your wrist center. The reason you have Z3, Z4, and Z5 all at this point, WC. Okay, this is your spherical wrist. Axis intersecting at one common point, the wrist center, and this is the <coughs> end effector frame. This is O6. This WC will nothing be will be nothing but O4. Sorry, it's not theta 4. O3, O4, and O5. All the five or three orbits will be here because each frame corresponds to one frame corresponds to Z3, one frame corresponds to four and five. These three are intersecting at one point, we call it WC, or the wrist center. This is your end effector frame. This distance, you can call it to be V6, between the two frames here. Okay. This distance, which is from this frame, here, all the way to here, you can call this to be V6. Because the final frame is not a part of this, the wrist has only three frames. Theta 3, theta 4, I'm sorry, O3, O4, and O5. Okay? Alright, using this, just write the table now. Using this, try to generate a table for this. <coughs> Fill up this table. Professor, why uh, X4 and X6 uh, intersected at the same point? Why X4 and? X5. Because the origins are at the same point, the axis will the axis will start from the origin, right? Okay. If the origins are at the same point, the axis will start off from the origin. If I have an origin, all the axes begin from here, right? We have moved three origins. We have moved three frames to come to one point. Okay. So you, if this was O3, let's say if this was O3, if this was O4, and if this was O5, we have combined the three into a wrist center because we want, don't want distances again. We want all of them to be at one point. So what we have done is we have merged the three of them to be at one point so that we can make it like this. Okay? So we can make this as a wrist with the center WC. Alright? So 
That's why we have moved. So all your axes will come together like this. The final frame is separate. Okay. Let's try to write down what you have here. So if you look at <coughs> A, A is measured along xi, right? So distance along x4 till it meets with the previous z axis, z3. This will be zero. Okay. How about x5? X5 is distance along uh, A5 will be distance along x5 till it meets with z4, zero. How about this? Zero. Because distance along x6 till it meets with z5. Z5 intersects exactly at the origin theta 0, 06. Here. So if you extend this, it will meet it at the origin. Okay. Let's go about doing alpha. So alpha is the angle between zi minus 1 to zi measured about xi. Right? You measure the angle about xi from zi to zi minus 1. All right, so the first angle that you'll measure is about x4. The angle between, it'll be z3 and z4. So between z3 and z4 is this, right? This is z3, this is z4, and you're measuring alpha about x4. So what, is, what will be x4? Minus 9. Yeah, so usually if this was z3 and that was z4, then it would be 90. It's minus 90 because you're moving like this, or it's 270. Okay, so you can write this as negative 90 or 270 degrees. Okay, this is angle about, it should be measured from this, but it's Z4 is here, so it's the opposite direction. All right, let's go to the next one, which is this. So now we have <coughs> X5, and you're measuring the angle here. In this case, you're measuring from here, this is the positive direction of rotation. So if you move 90, x4 to x5, this is 90 degrees. So this will be plus. <coughs> x5 and x6 are parallel. I'm sorry. Z, z5 and z6 are parallel. These two are parallel. So if you measure anything about this, it's going to be 0 because they are parallel. All right. Let's go to d. d is the distance along zi minus 1. Okay, z i minus 1. So when you try to measure d4, it is distance about z3. So distance along z3 till it is intersected by x4. What is distance along z3? 0. In this case, it's 0. Again, distance along z4 till it is intersected by x5. This will be 0. And finally, distance along z6 till it's intersected by x5. So, I'm sorry, z5 till it's intersected by z6. So from here to here, d6. Okay. So distance along <coughs> this. So this is the dh for a spherical person. you have to be a little careful because now you don't have the three axes. If I give you a manipulator and I say you have a spherical wrist, then you will draw it like this, okay? You will assume that the distances are zero. Even though that they are spaced out in the diagram, you will know that the last three joints are like this. They are not, they don't mean real distances. This links don't mean real distances because it's a spherical wrist. Uh, professor, can you repeat the Z3? Because it's Which one? Uh, D3? Z, Z3, yeah. D3, okay. So, D3 is nothing but, this is distance along Z3, right? D4 will be distance along Z3, yeah. okay? 4 minus 1 is 3. So, distance along Z3, right, till it is intersected by the XI axis, okay? okay? So, here you have 0, right? So, the more along distance along this axis till it's intersected by xi. xi is meeting this at the origin. So this will be... So 
the distance should be between uh, uh, O3 and O4 on, on, the, on the... No, not O3, yeah, o typically O3 and O4, but it depends. So basically, you measure D as distance along Zi minus 1 till it is intersected by... Xi. Okay, so in this case, this will be Z3 intersected by X4. Okay, in the next case, this will be along Z4 intersected by X5. Okay, so Z4 intersected by X5. Here, it will be along Z5 intersected by X6. So Z5 is starting here, it goes all the way. Okay, like so previous Z axis. All right. So, this is what a DH table for a rest will look like, and you can add this to a given configuration. So, let's take a complete 6 degree of freedom manipulator instead of the rest separately. If you have a total manipulator, let's look at what it amounts to. Any questions about this? If you want me to go over any particular part that you are not comfortable with, let me know. All right, let's try to do it for this manipulator. So the six degree of freedom map later. Here you have this will be theta one. This would be the base frame. All right, so this is, these three will form the rest. This is the rest. Okay, so even though you have 